I'm David Attenborough, and I am 93. I've had the most extraordinary life. It's only now that I appreciate how extraordinary. The living world is a unique and spectacular marvel. Yet the way we humans live on Earth is sending it into a decline. Human beings have overrun the world. We're replacing the wild with the tame. This film is my witness statement and my vision of the future. The story of how we came to make this our greatest mistake. And how, if we act now, we can yet put it right. Our planet is headed for disaster. We need to learn how to work with nature rather than against it. Educating the masses about conservation and effective use of nature is important. And one way of doing that is through an institution that practices conservation and preaches about conservation. And that institution is a zoological park. The project aims to design the expansion of the Bannergada Biological Park by understanding the shortcomings in the existing design and overcoming them by providing effective and innovative design solutions that will ensure opportune habitat spaces for the animals and provide the ideal environment for the interaction and enlightenment of the viewers. The four main roles of a zoo are conservation, research, recreation and education. Conservation of wildlife is essential in these times. Zoos play a major role in the conservation of endangered species and make sure these species don't go extinct. Research and scientific studies are carried out in zoos to ensure that the endangered species are protected by studying their behavior and needs. Zoos are one of the most common recreational spots which help people spend time connecting with nature and wildlife. It plays an important role in educating the people about the importance of conserving nature and wildlife. India has 103 national parks, 544 wildlife sanctuaries. Closing down all the zoos is much more difficult than making amendments and improving the space for the visitors and the animals and educating the visitors on the importance of conservation of wildlife. Zoo buildings emerged in the Baroque period in the form of zoological gardens, evolving into the colonial era with imagery of exotic worlds and developing in the modern period into an independent architecture. At the beginning of the 20th century, the animal was relocated from a swinger to an enclosure. The animals were now placed in spaces that were protected zones where the animals also felt safe. In the first generation of zoo architecture, there were colonial style exhibition buildings mostly made from materials of the animal's country of origin. The caseless animal keeping was introduced in the second generation of zoo architecture. The third generation majorly focused on technologies and functionality and determined the appearance of the building. Housing nature and treating buildings as landscape took place in the fourth generation zoo architecture. Fifth generation focuses on brand development with iconographic large scale buildings. Now focusing on the characteristics of a fifth generation zoo, new strategies were made for marketing zoos and more emphasis is placed on architecture aspects to enhance the quality and experience of the zoos. More attention is paid to choosing certain themes and recognition factors. Contemporary zoos came into the picture where modernization of the existing facilities is taking place to enhance the experience for the visitors as well as to provide better spaces for the animals. The living space of a wild animal is determined by four factors, safety from predators, a means of escape, a freely determinable sphere of action and a place to stay. The three comparable building species whose typologies will provide a range of highly relevant design outlines that also pertain to zoo buildings are present construction where safety and spatial limits are considered, theatre construction where showcasing and presentation is considered, and museum construction where education and pedagogy are considered. Without a doubt, zoo building typologies emerged from prison architecture, animals were kept in cages behind the bars, so the basis for the design of contemporary zoo buildings attempt to eliminate the boundaries between man and animals and grant the animals a respectable captive existence. 
The development of the zoo architecture building type displays parallel to that of theater construction. The common grounds is the relationship between the spectators area and the stage. In analogy to theater with actors stage set and spectators, the goal in the zoo is to stimulate representative scenery with artificial elements. The zoo as we know it today evolved as an institution from a natural history museum. The aesthetics of knowledge is a value that is applicable in the zoo as in the museum. The building typologies and their intended effects represent a requirement for the 10 parameters which are regions an animal come from, the particular urban context of the zoo, building form, how visitors are conducted to the building, spatial barriers, safety management, displaying the animal, signage, design, architecture and brand development. This sheet talks about the zoo design by Bijak Ingels and Bernard Chumi. These case studies in the sheet focuses on elephant enclosures. These case studies are about giraffe enclosures. Case studies about primates enclosures. Case studies about big cats enclosures. Case studies on interpretation center. Interpreting is the art of presenting to the public an entity to inform, entertain and motivate knowledge. The purpose of interpretation is giving the visitor a better understanding of why and in what sense a place or an object is important. Inferences of these case studies have been considered in the design process and the inputs have been taken while designing. These case studies expanded the understanding of the possible technology and design criteria. Mysore Zoo and Hyderabad Zoo have been studied as a live case study and are inferred based on those 10 design parameters. Bangalore Zoo commonly known as Banargata Zoo is located about 22 km south of Bangalore in the hills of Anekal. It is situated at the distance of 4 km from the boundary of BBMP office at a place called Gothigere. The location of the zoo is between the hills and therefore it always maintains a cool climate throughout the year with lush green nature. It is a highly undulating terrain spread with bare and rocky outcrops and valleys. The visitors can approach the site using the BMTC bus or metro which is in process. Apart from the zoo, Banargata possesses a safari park, butterfly park, an aquarium and is also a spot for trekking and hiking. The existing zoo is 12.4 hectares. Proposed expansion of zoo is 28.5 hectares. At present there are 58 enclosures in the zoo area. The birth percentage of mammals in the zoo is 16% of the total number of existing animals in the year 2018-19. specific question regarding the zoo were asked to the zoologist research scientist executive director and the vet the sections talk about the levels of the visitors and the animals the context of 8 kilometers from the zoo along the main road has been studied the expansion of the zoo is divided in three parts First part is the entry plaza second part is the savanna third part is the canals The highest point in the southeast corner of the site the lowest part is at the southwest corner of the site the direction of the wind is from west to east Most of the visitors pathway are shaded apart from the pathway from the entrance to the proposed interpretation center. There are aesthetically beautiful rocky outcrops near the African lion enclosures. Some pathways serve both visitors and services. The service entry is catered from the staff entrance in the existing area. Reasons for areas allotted to animals. Zebra, giraffe and ostrich are the species whose habitats are generally categorized as savanna grasslands. Since this part of the site is of a flat terrain, it is dedicated to these animals 
open grasslands with bay trees that are present for the behavioral enrichment of the cheetahs. Since this is a pocket of continuity of green area, in the context of the site, it is more suitable for the chimpanzees. The common eland lives primarily in open plains, grasslands and foothills. Due to the presence of rocky outcrop in the context, which resembles foothills and plains, this area is ideal for elands. The presence of rocky outcrops and terrains makes this area ideal for the lions, whose natural habitat varies from open grasslands to rocky outcrops. The presence of rocky outcrop is ideal for the pumas as it is a close resemblance to their natural habitat. The canids prefer uneven rocky terrain. On-site observations. The main entrance isn't welcoming. Makes the visitors feel that the zoo isn't maintained well. Half of the entrance is blocked by the shop, hence obstructing the flow of the visitors entering plus aesthetically bad for the main entrance. Suvarna Muki Garden is not being utilized to the fullest because of the circulation pattern and lack of maintenance. Visual obstruction because of the case design. Barricade design does not follow anthropometry. No shading structures for the animals. The garden opposite to the zebra enclosure doesn't serve the purpose of a garden because there is neither comfortable seating nor adequate vegetation. Behavioral concepts. Getting attention is important. Do not present potentially dangerous wild animals as tame pets. Makes visitors lose interest. Make sure it's a memorable experience. Elements involved for a memorable journey are anticipation, lack of distraction, novelty, fulfilled expectations, emotional involvement. First impressions. Despite excellent intentions, even the best zoos may be creating animal stereotypes that are not only incorrect but also work against the interest of wildlife preservation. Subordination as an educational tool. A large group of human beings surrounding a cage dominates the zoo animal and can scare them. Anthropomorphism as an education tool. Placement and positioning of the animals could change the perception of where the human animal rank is. Making the message clear. If zoo visitors see nothing more than animals in ugly condition, engaging in aberrant behavior, they are likely to feel nothing more than revulsion and its counterpoint pity. Make it enjoyable for visitors. Be sure to make an impact as this will make the people want to visit again. Do not cause negative emotions. Be sure to entertain effectively and educate accurately. Landscape emotion. This is when the visitors are in the same landscape but not in the same areas. Barriers separating the people from the animals are invisible and no matter where the viewers turn, the entire context appears consistently. Initial concept ideas. Dynamic moments. Fluid structures can be designed which gives a sense of movement and add life to space. The person's perspective and experience of the space can change while viewing it from different perspectives. Contrast. Structures may blend in as well as stand out depending on various factors in the context and uses. This creates a contrast which is essential because it keeps the visitors engaged. Play of light. Different shaded voids can be created. The shadows cast during different times of the day will also create a dynamic appearance and enhance the experience of the visitors. Axiality. Access can be maintained from one point to the other to visually connect them or to connect a certain group of elements. Flexibility and continuity. Nodes can be placed to connect paths and can be used to ensure the free movement of people. Site plan. The main entrance is towards northeast side of the plan. The visitors are welcome with a structure that is placed there to intrigue the visitors and hold their interest right from the beginning. Then they move ahead where they have a choice whether to go to the entry plaza or the snack area. The entry plaza is present to provide the visitors with amenities and the facilities that they would require before touring the zoo. It houses the ticket counter and the clock room. It also acts as a sharing device. Once they enter the zoo, on the right is the buggy boarding point and on the left is the baby care unit. As they move forward, there are enclosures of zebra and the elephant. Further ahead is the interpretation center, which houses the admin office, multimedia classroom, library, exhibit area and the restaurant. It also ha has endangered trees. The aquarium and the aviary are also accessible from here. The visitors exit from the interpretation center through the aviary, which leads them to the lion enclosure and then to the eland. The chimpanzee and jaguar enclosure come right after. 
the Jaguar and Cheetah enclosure have been interchanged from the existing plan. Now the new Jaguar enclosure is beside the interpretation center. The viewing deck in the interpretation center had to be secured by a pond. Since Jaguar prefer a habitat with a water body and Cheetahs generally prefer dry places, the above mentioned changes have been made. The pathway from here leads to the giraffe and ostrich enclosure, straight down towards the puma and the Cheetahs, and then towards the canids. The visitors after the tour of the old part of the zoo can then exit through the exit ramp which has toy shops on the way and the visitors have the choice to either visit the snack area or exit from the main entrance. Hello everyone. Ah, you scared me there, mate. Uh, I hope everyone's here. Yes, we're here. I can't see anything. Okay, folks, let's hit it. The idea is to maintain an access from the main entrance to the zoo entry. To effectively maintain the access, the structure should bear transparency and should be visually light. As it is a node for the snack area, the exit ramp and the main entrance, the structure should be flexible to be continuous. So the structure draws in characteristics of a feather. The feather's quill shaft taken as the central support and the veins as an undulating secondary supports. The visitors are served with happening views of the pond with ducks, fishes and other birds which keep them engaged and content right from the beginning. The plaza structure draws in the idea of a theatre curtain. The audience's expectation about the play and in this case the visitors look forward to the experience of touring the zoo. A grand aesthetical welcoming entry plaza like such keeps the visitors engaged and creates a moment's delay which builds a curiosity and further increases the significance of what's to come. The facade towards the main entrance has a dip to hide the chaos of the ticket counter and lobby. The north side is straight and open to draw in north light. The structure is inclined in the south side in order to avoid harsh sunlight during afternoons. The idea of staging the event is applied and the bonnet monkeys are used as the props. The endearingly notorious behavior of the bonnet monkeys will keep the visitors entertained and free of boredom in the lobby. The presence of bonnet monkeys adds to the whole experience of the plaza. It's like the magic and thrill and overture created before the curtain rises. Proposing an elephant enclosure instead of a garden close to the entrance, keeping in mind the behavior study of an elephant which is more so socializing and welcoming. This will boost the interest and experience of the visitors. A zebra without its pattern would be a mule. 
The idea for the design of the shaded area of the visitors to view the zebra takes inspiration from the stripes on a zebra. Patterns are created with light and shadow by designing multiple ribbon-like structures, creating a space with dynamic appearance. An interpretation center is a center of knowledge. Here the form drew inspiration from the matriarch, the queen elephant, who is a symbol of knowledge and intelligence. With the aquarium on the left hand side and the exhibit area on the right, this area is naturally lit by the diffuse blue light from the aquarium and the diffuse sunlight because of the foliage of the tree that acts as a backdrop for the exhibits, which gives the space an enchanting vibe. The lion, even though called king of the jungle, is found on rocky outcrops and amidst grasslands rather than rainforest. Our understanding of this dates back down to our Lion King days. Keeping this in consideration, the already existing rocky outcrop is extended to provide a den-like structure for the visitors. The word Jaguar comes from the indigenous word Yagyor, meaning he who kills with one leap. While designing the structure for the visitor's ear, the concrete band around the glass was designed as an abstraction of the posture of a leaping Jaguar. The structure for the visitors here is an abstraction of the giraffe's height and spots on the skin. Multiple colossal structures with creepers are designed keeping in mind the magnificent height of the animal and the shadows formed on the ground is an abstraction of their skin.
The Grand Canyon is the Puma's ideal habitat. The design is inspired by capturing the very essence of the canyons. Creating an abstraction of the canyons enhances the visitor's experience of viewing this spectacular beast. It is derived from the concept of landscape immersion. A sprinting cheetah is a spectacular view. What better to abstract the posture of a sprinting cheetah to design the structure for the visitors? The enclosure is completely enveloped in steel net, which is supported by bay trees, allowing the animal to perform its activity, that is climbing trees. Entry Plaza. There are seven snack shops and a cafeteria for the visitors to sit and eat. Ticket counter of 90 square meters has a locker room, surveillance desk, four ticket counters, a pantry, and a washroom. Above the ticket counter is a viewing deck. Buggy boarding point. This is where the visitors board the buggy from. Also acts as a parking area at night for the buggies. It has a service garage of 5 meter by 5 meter. Around 8 to 10 buggies can park here at one time. This is the direction from which the buggies return after completing the tour. Baby care unit. It is a space that provides facilities for parents to attend to their babies and toddlers. Spaces require the counters with few necessary kitchen accessories such as microwave, cooktop and wash basin. A washroom with the facility to change nappies. Private spaces for mothers to breastfeed and waiting areas for people accompanying them. Interpretation Center The ground level has the exhibit area, admin office, multimedia classroom, library and the viewing deck, from where the Jaguar space and the inside of the aviary can be viewed. After covering the exhibit area, the visitors are led towards a spiral escalator, which takes them to the restaurant below with a view of the aquarium. The services of the structure are in minus one floor. The entry to which is from the service route, which also acts as the emergency exit route. The service area caters to a warehouse, a fish breeding lab, a control room, a kitchen, a surveillance room, a pump room and washroom for the visitors. The entry to the aviary is from this floor. Cuts through the entry pathway right before the entry plaza and the pond. Cuts through the entry plaza whose average height is 6 meters. This is the reverse view of the section 2. Cuts through the zebra enclosure. As seen, the trench is provided as a part of the boundary element for the enclosure. Besides that, the viewing structure for the visitors is seen. Cuts through the elephant enclosure which is situated right at the beginning instead of a garden. The viewing deck above the ticket counter is also visible. The colossal structure which acts as a viewing structure for the visitors of the giraffe enclosure is seen in this section. As seen clearly, the structure is an abstract of the representation of a giraffe's height. Following the contours of the site, the giraffe enclosure is at a higher level than the elephant. The section cuts through the interpretation center and the jaguar enclosure. The spaces inside the interpretation center with a viewing deck at a height of 4 meters above the pool level is seen. The restaurant at ground level has a view of the aquarium.
cut through the puma enclosure and the viewing structure which is an abstract of the canyons. This section cuts through the interpretation center and shows a view of the aviaries beside it. The multimedia classroom are seen in this section. The feather-like structure at the entrance, the lobby space in the entry plaza and its viewing deck is seen here. Feather detail. Since every piece is unique in shape and size in this structure, the details have been provided with a reference guide. The quill shaft is a steel profile of 80mm in dia and the veins are 50mm in dia. Ribbon detail. The construction of this ribbon is very unique as the reinforcement bar is shaped into a certain profile and the engineering bricks are passed through it. They have 6 profile and are unique in both plans and elevation, hence provided with a grid. Concrete band detail. The plan and elevation of the cheetah and jaguar band have been provided here. In this detail, the edge of the band has a small parapet to which the L angle is anchored. The L angle in turn holds the steel net end curl. This detail talks about the fixtures of the bark and the steel net. The fixture has a head cap and a cylindrical body to which the steel cables holding the net through a steel rim is welded. So this fixture is nailed into the bark of a bay tree. Giraffe colossal detail. The reinforced funnel structure caters to the growth of the creepers, hence the soil. There is a drain pipe of dia 30mm that goes down to the ground to drain out excess water of the soil. Aquarium glass detail. 600mm thick acrylic held by eye shaped concrete columns. Parasol detail. The parasol structure is a UPVC structure that is prefabricated in the factory. It is a structure with interlocking profiles from positive direction and negative direction. The negative profiles fit between the positive profiles with the UPVC fixture. Each profile is unique in dimension. Each negative interlocking piece has its unique name. The names are based on the previous and the succeeding positive profile. For example, A01B, where A is the previous positive profile, 01 is the number of the negative profile. B is the succeeding positive profile. The positive profile starts with profile A and ends with profile B in. The negative profile starts from 1 and ends at 58. The UPVC fixture is an angle adjustable fixture. As said, the negative profile has unique names for every piece. Canyon. The whole structure is divided into 5 profiles. North, South, East, West and Visitors profile. The construction technique of which is such that the prefabricated concrete blocks are passed through the reinforced bars. Fence detail. The fence can be converted to a bench where the visitors can sit and view the animals as long as they want to without getting tired throughout the tour.